OK, bon. Finished our mot de passe, j'ai oublié. Now we're going to move on to la question du jour. OK, la question du jour, quelle sorte de pizza est-ce que tu préfères? Quelle sorte de pizza est-ce que tu préfères? And this is a, the same question, just um, phrased a little bit differently. So, quelle pizza préfères-tu? Quelle pizza préfères-tu? Est-ce que tu préfères la pizza au pepperoni ou la pizza à la saucisse ou la pizza aux anchois? <laughs> I've never tried that, to be honest, but it does not sound very appetizing. Est-ce que tu préfères la pizza aux légumes? Um, Est-ce que tu préfères la pizza au fromage ou la pizza à l'ananas? L'ananas. Can we tell what l'ananas means by the picture? Hawaiian? You got it. Pineapple. L'ananas, c'est pineapple. Très bien. Pineapple. And then over here, légumes. Qu'est-ce que c'est en anglais, légumes? Vegetables. Mm -hmm. Vegetables. Exactement. Très bien. Légumes. Um, ananas. The rest is pretty obvious. Au fromage, just plain cheese. Okay. Alors, Carson, you're going to start. You're going to ask the question, quelle pizza préfères-tu? And Valentina, you're going to answer, je préfère la pizza au pepperoni. Je préfère la pizza à la saucisse, etc. Oops. Um, et Valentina, then you're going to throw the question back to Carson. Quelle pizza préfères-tu? And Carson's going to tell us his preference. Okay. Carson, whenever you are ready, you can both take yourselves off mute. Kel Pizza prefers to. Yeah, prefer la pizza a fromage. Yes. Okay, très bien, Valentina. Et maintenant, la question pour Carson. Kel Pizza prefer to. Je prefer la pizza a pepperoni. Au pepperoni, très bien. Donc, Carson préfère la pizza au pepperoni, mais Valentina préfère la pizza au fromage. Moi, je préfère la pizza aux légumes. Maybe not this many vegetables. This is kind of a lot for me, but j'aime les oignons, onions, et les poivrons, peppers, les champignons, mushrooms. Um, etc. J'aime beaucoup la pizza aux légumes. Okay, et à la saucisse aussi. Bon, mm -hmm. so like I said, that is going to come back into play. This is not a totally random question. Um, we are going to be looking at la pizza et les types différents de pizza in our next story. Um, and we'll get to talking about that in a moment. But before we do, um, aujourd'hui, Say quel jour? Carson, you already told me what day it is. Valentina, can you answer that question? Say quel jour aujourd'hui? Say lundi, mardi, mercredi. Uh, mercredi. Say mercredi. Et quelle est la date, Valentina? Uh, le 26 janvier. <laughs> Excellent. C'est le 26 janvier. Et le 26 janvier est l'anniversaire de Bessie Coleman. Bessie Coleman était une aviatrice américaine, une aviatrice. Uh, so she was a pilot or an um, aviator. Elle est la première femme noire au monde à piloter un avion. La première femme noire. So the first black woman au monde in the world a pilote an avion the first female pilot in the world or sorry first black female pilot female pilot in the world aux etats-unis the united states aux etats-unis les écoles de pilotage refusaient d'accepter les afro-américains et surtout les femmes so what was the problem in the U.S.? 
laissez col schools, laissez col de pilotage, so pilot schools, refusez d'accepter les Afro-Américains et surtout, surtout say especially en anglais, les femmes noires. So this was not something that was typical at all. Oops. Donc, so, elle a étudié le français. Et elle est allée, she went en France en 1920. Remember when we say these dates, we start with the thousands, mille. In, uh, if we were talking about today's date, it would be de mille. 900, so literally 900, then we have those numbers at the end, so 20, 1920. Elle a obtenu la licence internationale de pilote le 15 juin 1921. Alors, she obtained or got, what's happening? La licence internationale de pilote. So she was able to pilot planes internationally. En 1921, which as you can probably guess, and as we talked about earlier, that's a pretty big deal for a woman, let alone a black woman. Alors voilà, Bessie Coleman, c'est son anniversaire aujourd'hui, le 26 janvier. Okay, maintenant. Voici um, les gestes, TPR, our, our TPR, our actions for this next story that we're doing. And something that's a little bit different, if you've watched this video, then you know what I'm going to say. But if you haven't, now, now we can figure that out. So something that is different about this story is that we are going to be using the plural. So instead of just one character doing the different things, having whatever little adventure, we're going to have a couple of characters doing some stuff together. So before, I would always start TPR with la classe. La classe danse. La classe mange. La classe met, etc. But now uh, we are going to look at les élèves. So instead of having one entity, la classe singulier, we're going to have uh, les élèves, plural, students, so all the individuals together, pluriel, okay? So these are a little bit different than what we've seen before, but you're going to find the answer or the actions are the same because it's the same verb. It's the same action, okay? So can you put your cameras on for me? S'il vous plaît, s'il vous plaît. Merci. Bonjour, Valentina. See, I've never even met you before, so it's especially nice to see you. Bonjour, Carson. Okay, I'll let you turn your cameras off after this, okay? Les élèves vont. Les élèves vont. Très bien. Now, we saw this before with les uh, la classe va vers. Va. So, what are we saying in English here? Les élèves vont. The students go. Oh. Très bien. So the other benefit to having your cameras on is even if you don't answer, even if you don't have your microphone, I, I can at least see your mouth moving. Okay. Les élèves vont. Les élèves ont. Les élèves ont. Now this one, I apologize because it is a repeat. Where have we seen this one before? La classe may. La classe may for putting something somewhere. Here, Les élèves ont means the students have, the students have. So it's a slightly different um, meaning, although the same, we're going to use the same action for that, at least for now. Les élèves ont, the students have. Okay, show me. Les élèves vont. Les élèves ont. <laughs> what do you say? BPC, it's, they, they do sound a lot alike. Les élèves vont, les élèves ont. Okay, now. We use on, have, to talk about being hungry um, en français. So, les élèves ont faim 
We're just gonna rub our belly like we're hungry. They say they have on faim. They say they have on faim. And on, if it literally means have, then are we literally saying the students are hungry? Are we saying something different? The students have hunger, which is a different way than we phrase it in English. Now, Valentina, I think Madame Jeunet told me that you, are you a Spanish speaker? Yeah, I speak Spanish. Okay, so same deal in Spanish, right? Yeah. So uh, in Spanish as well, we say literally have hunger. Okay, mm -hmm. right now. Les élèves veulent. Les élèves veulent. They want, want, veulent. Okay, let's go through what we have so far, and then the next one's a little bit tricky. So les élèves vont. Les élèves vont. Les élèves ont. Les élèves ont faim. Les élèves veulent. Excellent. Okay. Les élèves sont. So this is like, we've seen this same verb before with je suis, je suis petite, je suis sympa, etc. We've also seen it with il est, elle est, elle est méchante, il est grand. Um, so here we're seeing it with il, les élèves, uh, in a plural form. So instead of saying I am, or he is, or she is, we're saying they are, they are. And that's obviously a hard one to come up with an action for. So we're going to be like the essence of one's being. Okay, kind of uh, getting a little, <laughs> a little uh, out there, but that's okay because we had to think outside the box for this one. Okay, les élèves sont, les élèves sont, they are. <laughs> okay, et les élèves leur done, leur done. Okay, this is a little bit like lui dit. When we've seen lui dit in our previous stories, it means to tell or to say to him or her. Leur done, now we're giving something. And instead of lui, him or her, we see leur, which means them. So leur done, the students give them. Les élèves leur done. Okay, let's go through all those one more time. Les élèves vont. Les élèves ont. Les élèves ont faim. Les élèves volent. Très bien, Carson. Les élèves sont. <laughs> Les élèves leur donnent. Excellent. Okay. Now, for these next few, we have a sound effect that we're going to make. Um, this one, here is our next set of video. Okay. Um, I think, Valentina, you've heard both of these. My classes have done donk before. We have not done malheureusement. So this is going to be new to you, Carson. Okay. So malheureusement, it's a big, long word. Malheureusement, on anglais, say, unfortunately, malheureusement. And so in our next story, when we hear malheureusement, we're going to go, wah, wah. Okay. And Valentina, you've been in an actual class with this kind of an approach. So you kind of see that it works a little bit better if you actually have other people around and you don't feel quite as silly. I get that. Um, but <laughs> As you are watching me tell the story, um, if you want to chime in with wah, wah, just to interact and maybe be more part of it, you're always welcome to. And at that point, you'll be by yourself, so you won't be uh, embarrassed. <laughs> okay, so malheureusement, more wah, wah, and donc, so... So, très bien. So, for each of these, we have um, a little uh, 
little sound effect that helps us to remember what they mean. This one, literally, we're translating it so, and this one, wah, wah, kind of gives the um, idea of what it means. Okay, last thing. Facile, difficile. Facile, difficile. Difficile, it's a cognate, right? Difficile, say, difficult, difficult. A facile, say, le contraire de difficile. Donc, easy. And now, I realize that not everything that is easy is good and not everything that is difficult is bad, obviously. But as you know, we have to simplify things for the sake of this class. So we're just going to make it that way. Facile, difficile. Facile, difficile. Okay, merci. You may go ahead and turn your cameras back off if that is what you prefer um, while we go through the rest of this stuff. Okay, maintenant, for our new characters, we have the ones that a couple of you, Valentina, one of these is yours, and Carson, I haven't had a chance to look at yours yet, but I will. Um, les nouveaux personnages sont um, ballet, um, ballet, which the picture is a little bit blurry, but it's a, a broom, um, ballet, a, un citron, Mabel le citron. Donc, il y a peludin. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Peludin? Peludin. Peludin, of course it is. Okay, peludin, le ballet. It's very pretty when it's pronounced correctly. A Mabel le citron. Okay, just in case we can't tell, un citron looks like citrus, right? And it's yellow, so it is a lemon, lemon. Mabel le citron, a peludine, le ballet. Okay, so what we have to do now is we have to figure out what peludine and Mabel are all about. So, goodness gracious, how do we always start our stories Ilia. Ilia, exactement. Okay, donc. So, Ilia. Ilia, um, ballet. Et comment s'appelle le ballet? Peludine. Il s'appelle Peludine, très bien. Donc, Ilia, un ballet qui s'appelle Peludine. Um, make this a little bit bigger. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each of the characters and we're going to talk about them in this particular context just individually. And then we'll make one sentence at the end where we say something about them, about the two of them together. And then when we do the story next week, that'll be more talking about them together doing different things. That's where all of the les élèves volent, les élèves vont, all those they do whatever actions that's going to come into play. Okay, il y a un ballet qui s'appelle Peludine. Okay, est-ce que Peludine, il est grand ou il est petit? Il est grand ou il est petit? Il est uh, petit? Well, il yeah, est petit, but it's toi ma jeune. How do you say it? Toi ma jeune, toi ma jeune. Like, like, medium. Oh, the time moyen. Okay. Peludine a the time moyen. Très bien. The time moyen. Et, on va regarder Peludine. Il a les cheveux. Les cheveux. We can kind of go with uh, his broom bristles being les cheveux. Carson, can you tell what color that is? Les cheveux. I can't really see it. Like... Okay. Comedy tone black. Do you remember that that color? Noir. Noir. Très bien, Carson. Alors, il a les cheveux noirs is, I think, how it looks there. Il a les cheveux noirs. And we can't really see his eyes his eye color very well, so we can make that up. Il a les cheveux noirs. Et il a les yeux de quelle couleur, Valentina? 
Brown. Oh, okay. Mais en français, il a les yeux. Café. Café ou brun. Brun. Uh, yeah. Les cheveux noirs et les yeux. Brun. Now, café, are you, I, are you pulling that from Spanish or from Kinda. something you learned in French class? Yeah, it's from Spanish. Okay, that's what I thought. I wanted to make sure because I had never heard the term cafe used in French before, but sometimes there are little slang terms and stuff that I don't know. So <laughs> um, <laughs> I wanted to make sure I asked. So uh, yeah, we have to say in French, we're going to use brun for the most part because it's a cognate. It looks like brown in English, but we can also say, and this is also like Spanish, marron, les yeux marron. Yeah. Um, so il a les yeux bruns ou il a les yeux marron. Excellent. Okay. Il a les yeux bruns, il a les cheveux noirs. Est-ce que, Carson, we'll let you choose this one. Carson, est-ce que Peludine est sympa ou méchant? Il est sympa ou il est méchant? Sympa. Il est sympa. Okay. Alors, il a les yeux, uh, cheveux noirs et les yeux bruns. Um, et il est sympa. Okay. Ooh, this is not a question I asked in the Google form, but this is another way we can describe somebody. Où est-ce que Peludine habite? Où est-ce qu'il habite? Hmm. Où est-ce qu'il habite, Valentina? Come up with something fun for us. <laughs> Where is your family from? Peru. Peru. Well, why don't you do that? Il habite au Peru. Il habite au Peru. And that is exactly the same, like the spelling of it in French. Sometimes the countries are a little bit different in French than they are in English, but Peru is Peru en français aussi. So that works out. Il habite au Peru. Très bien. Okay, maintenant, Carson, this one's you. Qu'est-ce que Peludine M? Faire. Quelle activité est-ce qu'il aime faire? Hmm. Est-ce qu'il aime dessiner, to draw? Ou est-ce qu'il aime danser? Ou chanter? La 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 la. Um, ou faire la cuisine? Chanter, yes. Il aime chanter. Ok, bien. Peludine aime chanter. Mais qu'est-ce qu'il n'aime pas? Qu'est-ce qu'il n'aime pas faire, Valentina? He doesn't like food. Ah, oh, ok. Il n'aime pas. Quel est le, le verbe, l'action? Il n'aime pas... Hmm. Any food. Ok, but how do we say to eat? Manger. Oh, eat. Manger. Excellent. Donc, Peludine aime chanter, mais il n'aime pas manger. OK. Très bien. Maintenant, il y a un deuxième personnage, personnage numéro deux. Il y a un citron qui s'appelle... Mabel. A, we're going to say that Mabel is kind of the opposite of Peludine. Donc, Peludine est de taille moyenne. Well, there's not really an opposite of that, but we can just do one of our other height options. Donc, Peludine est de taille moyenne et Mabel est grande Ou elle est petite, Carson? Grande. Oh. oh, okay. Super. Elle est grande. Ça marche. Mabel est grande. Okay. Carson, this one's to you. Elle a les cheveux de quelle couleur? We're going to pretend, just like we did with Peludine and his uh, broom bristles, les cheveux noirs. Pour uh, Mabel le citron... Les feuilles, les feuilles, her leaves are going to 
act as her hair. So Carson, do we remember what color this is? Elle a les, les cheveux. Is it vert? Vert, très bien. Elle a les cheveux vert. A les yeux. Oh, est-ce qu'elle a les yeux d'une couleur spécifique? Je pense qu'elle a les yeux bruns aussi. So she won't be totally opposite from Pilgin. A les yeux bruns. Mais si Pilgin est sympa et Mabel est le contraire Mabel a méchant, très bien. And let's go ahead and put a little bit of négatif in here. Mabel n'est pas sympa. Mabel n'est pas sympa. Elle est méchante. Elle est méchante. Okay. Mabel n'est pas sympa, elle est méchante. Elle habite au Pérou aussi. They're going to be friends, so it'll just be easier if they live in the same place. Elle habite au Pérou. Comment dit-on also? Aussi. Aussi, excellent. Elle habite au Pérou aussi. Um, qu'est-ce qu'elle aime faire? Carson, qu'est-ce que Mabel aime faire? Est-ce qu'elle aime courir ou jouer au basket ou faire la cuisine? Courir. Courir. OK. Elle aime courir. Mais elle est méchante, so courir. Elle aime courir. <laughs> Qu'est-ce qu'elle n'aime pas faire, Valentina? He doesn't like um, um, making liquid. Oh, okay. Um, el, oh, okay, parce que c'est un citron. Okay, so what is, so we know that we use the verb faire for lots of different activities. We have, you haven't met them yet, Valentina, but you probably will soon there. We have two twins in this class who are gymnasts. So with them, we learned the term faire de la gymnastique. You might have heard me say it a minute ago, faire la cuisine. Um, did you learn any other faire expressions in your class that you can remember? Yeah, like faire, um, like faire, um, Joey video games. No. Oh, okay, right. So that's going to be a little bit different. Jouer au jeu yeah. vidéo. But when we use the verb faire, faire just means to do. So we see it in, like I said, uh, in, in verbs in expressions like faire de la gymnastique ou faire la cuisine. So it's a very useful verb for lots of different activities. In this case, we're going to use it for making. Elle n'aime pas faire la limonade. Which is understandable if you're a lemon, right? <laughs> okay. Mabel aime courir, mais elle n'aime pas faire la limonade. Okay. We're going to do just one-ish, maybe a couple sentences down here to talk about Mabel A. Peludine. So now we're talking about them together. Pilodine, a Mabel, okay. Como dit-on, they are, they are. Do you remember which one that is? Son, excellent. Pilodine, a Mabel, son, ami. Ils sont amis. A, um, which one of them are just quick thing? Hmm. 
Hmm. We can just leave it at that for now. You sont me. And then when we actually get into the, the story itself, we'll use more of these plural verbs. Il sont fin, ils vont, um, wherever they end up going. Okay. Just looks weird at the end there. Um, why don't we do this? Fedorini et Mabel sont amis. Ils M. Now, when we say they like, we're going to use, it's going to sound just like if I say I like, or he likes, or she likes. J'aime, il aime, elle aime. To say they like, we're going to say ils aiment, ils aiment. So we have this e and t at the end. We just don't hear it. So don't let that trip you up. It's not any big deal. But let's do one thing that they both like together. Ils sont amis, ils aiment. Comment dit-on to spend time? We've seen that with our weekend talk. Passe. Passe temps avec. Oui, très bien. Ils aiment passer du temps. Um, and generally, when we've seen passer du temps for weekend talk, we see passer du temps avec ma famille, passer du temps avec mes amis. Um, we're going to do a, another word here. Ils aiment passer du temps ensemble. Ensemble. We're going to talk about what that word means just in case it's not obvious. But we have a word just like that in English, an ensemble. Carson, do you know what an ensemble is by any chance? I don't think so. Okay. An ensemble. Do you know what it is, uh, Valentina? It reminds me of like Avengers Assemble. Yeah, and you're not wrong. Assemble is when you bring people together, right? Like the Avengers in that in that example. So an ensemble or an ensemble, as we say it in English, is a group of people, a group of people. And um, oftentimes it means a smallish group of people. Um, but I guess you could have a large ensemble as well. Um, so ils aiment passer du temps ensemble. Now, in this case, they like to spend time group. That doesn't really make sense. So what do you think it means here? They like to spend time with each other. With each other, together. Très bien. Ils aiment passer du temps ensemble. Together. Okay, bon. Yeah, that looks a little better. I felt like just having Péludine et mes sont me was just a little too short and... Uh, kind of random at the end there. Now at least we have a little bit more information. Ils aiment, they like, ils aiment passer du temps ensemble. Okay, bon. So let's look through that one more time. Il y a un ballet qui s'appelle Péline. Péline est de taille moyenne. Il a les cheveux noirs et les yeux bruns et il est sympa. Il habite au Pérou. Uh, Péloudine aime chanter, mais il n'aime pas manger. Il y a un citron qui s'appelle Mabel. Mabel est grande. Elle a les cheveux verts et les yeux bruns. Mabel n'est pas sympa. Elle est méchante. Elle habite au Pérou aussi. Mabel aime courir, mais elle n'aime pas faire la limonade. Péloudine et Mabel sont amis. Ils aiment passer du temps ensemble. Okay, so here's what you're going to need to do. You'll copy this down into your cahier under whatever your last story or person spatial was. Um, Carson, for you, that would be Le Sage, I believe. I don't think we've had any person spatial since we did the monkey story. Um, because we've had a couple weeks of not having stories because we had our exam and then just kind of some preliminary stuff for the new quarter. So, um, at any rate, this will go into your stories section, les histoires, of your cahier, of your notebook. Um, copy it down and remember to skip lines so that you can then translate it. That will be an, an activity we do next week. So keep that in mind. Um, demain, 
Ili out your anti role. You'll have a quiz, your listening, typical listening quiz with Vrai Ufo um, on this story tomorrow as part of your just daily activities. Okay. And that's all I have for today. So we can go ahead and wrap it up unless you have any other questions for me. Um, Valentina, if you want to stay on for just one minute, I can make sure that you understand what will be going on tomorrow since you have, you, you're not used to our schedule yet. Um, but I'll go ahead and say bye to both of you now. So if you take yourselves off mutes. Au revoir, tout le monde. Au revoir. Au revoir. Merci. Au revoir. Thank you for being here.